<clears throat> Hello, it's John Heaton, and today I'm going to have a look at the new Blur album. Uh, but before I get started, just a couple of things. One, very sorry to hear about the death of Sinead O'Connor, a big talent. I don't have many of her albums, but I admire her as a protest singer and a, pro a spokesman and someone who's willing to speak up for her views. So it's very sad to, to hear of her death at aged only 56. Second thing is, um, I got some comments on my last video that I was too negative and one person called me very, very, very cynical <laughs> because I said a few negative words about the upcoming possible Beatles, new Beatles song. Well, most of my videos on this channel are pretty positive, but occasionally I have to say something I feel and so that's just the way it is. So. Uh, I try to keep my videos positive because it's a bit depressing making negative ones and this one is definitely a positive one because this new album this is my son's vinyl copy I picked it up on DVD on um, CD and it was very re first of all I'd like first thing I'd like to say it's very reasonably priced um, the album is about 13 pounds on vinyl and about 10 quid on CD which I think is pretty good value um, a lot of artists charge uh, almost double that and so I was very pleased to see the prices and that's one of the reasons I bought it now one of the first things to say about this album is it's very nicely uh, paced and it flows very well and it's a good length in my opinion for an album 36 minutes four seconds at the standard album and if you buy the CD you get two bonus tracks um, and it lasts for 42 minutes 30 and now this is apparently the first album of theirs which is less than 50 minutes so basically what was happening in their previous albums is they were releasing near, near as damn it a double album every time and for that reason I find it a little bit hard to listen to Blur albums all the way through I think up until recently I did consider them as mainly a singles band and by the way apologies I'm not an expert on Blur and sorry, I don't want to upset any Blur fans out there. I have a lot of respect for them. I've got about, I think this is the seventh CD of theirs I've picked up. I don't have all of them. But uh, I love their early stuff and I admire the way they've come back. First of all, with 2015, uh, The Magic Whip, uh, which was had some great tracks on it. And now, in J July the 21st, this year, this brand new album, the Ballad of Darren. Now Darren is apparently the bodyguard who used to work for the band and he had been going on at, at Damon to keep working on a song called The Ballad because sort of Damon had sort of started it and not finished it or something. And he, so he did that and so the whole album is named after him and here's a picture of him. Uh, they were going to put it on the cover but they thought he didn't want the publicity so they put it on the inside cover and this CD the rec the vinyl doesn't come with this but the CD comes with a little poster of this picture taken in Scotland back in the 90s apparently um, of a guy swimming in the swimming pool with the ocean in the background in the grey skies um, now one thing I'd say about this album first of all it's the original lineup uh, Damon Alban vocals keyboards piano Graham Cox and guitar backing vocals Alex James on bass and Dave Rountree on drums, the original lineup and first album for eight years. Um, interesting, the Alex, Alex James, the bass player, I uh, was reading, is a food writer for The Sun newspaper and also makes cheese, which was, I thought was an interesting uh, thing for a rock star to go and do. Um, uh, so I, what, one thing I'll say about this album is it, it's just beautiful. I mean, it's more concentrating on balance versus up-tempo up numbers. Starts off with the song, The Ballad, and uh, a lot of the tracks are similar in that respect, but I think it's one of these albums which grows on one, and I've played it three or three and a half times, if you count the time in the garden on the JBL, then it's four times. Uh, um, Twice I was listening to it intently and the other t times were, it, was, it was more in the background. But uh, yeah, I would say my highlights on the album are the, the opening track, The Ballad, although you could argue it's not the best choice of opener, um, but it's a great song, great melody. St. Charles's Square is a good up-tempo numbers and Barbaric is outstanding. Russian Strings is moving. The, the lyrics are very mature and... They're either singing about what a sad state the world is in or they're talking about love lost, um, which is a favorite topic for 
Blur songs over the years and um, very affecting words. And the, the CD comes with the, the words here so you can follow them. Uh, I'm just trying to think if the, uh, if the album comes with the words as well. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, they're in quite small print, but they're there. Um, so you can follow them there. Um, so I think the album's more concentrating on, on ballads than up-tempo numbers, but as I say, the melodies are beautiful. Damon is singing very well. Uh, the melodies are good. The musicianship is top-notch as it always is on a Blur album. I was just looking at some recent set lists that the band did. A friend of mine, Tim, saw them at Wembley earlier in July and they did a kind of almost like a greatest hit set, but I was reading they, they did a concert somewhere in London on the 25th of July where they featured the whole of this new album from start to finish and then encored with six other songs which were not well known particularly. I mean, there's one uh, Pyong Young from The Magic Whip, Clover Over Dover from Park Life, Mr. Briggs this is sort of on the, the There Is No Other Way single, and All Your Life is an out outtake from the 97 Blur album, theme from the imaginary film, outtake from the Park Life sessions, The Universal is from The Great Escape. So none of their biggest hits on that particular concert, but I think in general they've been doing a kind of mixture of the old and new. But I always admire it when bands play a new album from start to finish uh, over the years, not many, not too many examples of that. Elton John comes to mind, as I've said before, with his Captain Fantastic uh, in '75. Um, so I was very happy that, that you know. I think this this is a pretty rare example of a of an old band still at the top of their game, as far as I'm concerned. I was reading some reviews online, mostly positive. Some people saying it's more like a Damon solo album. And some people saying it's boring, and not fast enough, but a lot of reviews saying, you know, it's up there with their best. And I, I, I wouldn't like to say it's better than their 90s stuff, but I think it's very worthy and it's a great latter day album, probably on a par with The Magic Whip and maybe even preferable because it's not so long. So it's easily digestible. And by the way, the two bonus tracks, The Rabbi and The Swan, if you just listen to the album on CD, the, the album flows so nicely that the two bonus tracks kind of carry on from the heights, which is the final track on the main album. And, you know, I, I haven't got to the stage where I know all the, all the songs back to front, but they flow very nicely from one to another. And f highlights for me so far would be Far Away Island, beautiful melody, beautiful harmonies. Goodbye Albert is very moving. Uh, I like the Everglades, I like the heights, and I like the bonus tracks. In fact, I like all, there's not a weak track on the album for me. And I think it's one of those which was repays repeated listenings. So that was Blur's new album, The Ballad of Darren. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.